In determining the confidence interval for population mean, ginamitan natin ng formula yung ating previous example ng x bar plus or minus the z star times s over the square root of n. Yung formula na yun ay ginagamit kung ang population sigma is given. Now, paano naman kung ang population sigma ay hindi given doon sa ating confidence interval problem at yung ating sample size ay less than 30? Now, kapag ka ganun ang, ang sitwasyon nung inyong research or nung inyong word problem involving confidence interval, gagamitin na natin siya, gagamitan na natin siya ng t-distribution. So, ang t-distribution or confidence interval for t, ginagamit siya kung ang sample size nyo is less than 30 at yung population sigma is unknown. Now, ito yung magiging bagong formula natin in estimating our population mean sa pag, kapag ka yung ating sample size e maliit. So, at ang gagamitin natin is x bar plus or minus, minus t star times s all over the square root of n. So, ang major changes natin ngayon will be yung t star, so hindi na natin ginagamit si z, at yung ating sigma na hindi given, so ang gagamitin nilang natin is yung sample standard deviation at saka yung sample size. So, paano natin gagamitin yung formula na ito sa pagkuha ng confidence interval using t-distribution? Dito sa ating word problem, the amount of vitamin C in a corn soy blend food was measured in milligrams. And in 8 randomly selected production, there's 26, 31, 23, 22, 11, 22, 14, and 31 milligrams of uh, vitamin C content doon sa ating corn soy blend na product. Now, how are we going to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mu based on our 8 samples? So, dito sa word problem natin, pasok siya sa confidence interval for t kasi yung sample size natin is less than 30 at yung population standard deviation is not given. Now, sa ating unang step, kailangan nating kunin yung mga uh, numerical values na kakailanganin natin sa pagkuha ng ating confidence interval. Meron tayong given na c which is at 95% level. Meron tayong sample size na 8. At ang isa pang major difference ng t sa z is that kailangan mo ng degrees of freedom. Ang degrees of freedom, makukuha mo siya by subtracting 1 from your sample size. So, ang degrees of freedom natin is equal to 7. At kakailanganin natin itong 7 na ito sa pagkuha ng t star or yung critical value natin later on. Now, yung mean and standard deviation, kailangan yung siyang makuha using your calculator kasi data set yung given sa inyo, hindi yung actual value ng x bar and s. So, kailangan nyo ng extra step in finding the mean and the standard deviation using your calculator. At ang lumabas sa calculator natin is 22.5 yung ating sample mean at yung sample standard deviation natin is 7.19. Now, yung second step, kailangan natin i-verify yung conditions kung masasatisfy ba siya para malalaman natin kung mag pwede nating um, pagkatiwalaan yung ating confidence interval based doon sa ating confidence interval method. Now, sa so step number two, yung ating sample size ay randomly selected based on the given problem, pero yung normality niya hindi na mentioned doon sa problem. So, kailangan kapag ginamit natin yung ating uh, method sa pagkuha ng confidence interval, we need to proceed with caution. Kasi hindi natin alam kung galing sa nor normally distributed population yung ating walong samples. Even though pag ginraft nyo itong samples na to, medyo uh, symmetrical yung ating uh, graph, hindi pa rin natin siya matatrust kasi yung normality is hindi na satisfied. Now, kung ang isa sa mga conditions ay hindi satisfied doon sa ating uh, word problem, Hindi ibig sabihin no na hindi na natin kailangan kunin yung estimated value natin ng population parameter. Pwede pa rin natin siyang kunin, pero doon sa conclusion natin, we just need to take note na we need to proceed with caution na pagkatiwalaan yung values na makukuha natin. So yung step number three, paghanap ng T star. Sa paghanap ng T star, parehas pa rin siya ng Z star, 1 minus C all over 2. So yung C natin dito is 0.95. So we have 1 minus 0.95 divided by 2, which gives us 0 0.025. Now this time, kailangan nyo namang tumingin sa T table nyo. So kailangan nyo yung degrees of freedom dun sa T table at mapapansin nyo yun sa mga T tables na makikita sa mga libro sa statistics. Or kung meron kayong calculator, simply put in inverse T 
and then yung in yung uh, value which is 0 0.025 na nakuha natin using the formula comma yung in yung degrees of freedom na 7 at ang t star or yung critical value na ibibigay sa inyo will be 2.36 na kakailanganin natin sa formula natin. So, ito yung T-star na gagamitin natin sa step number 4. Sa so step number 4, ito na yung paggamit ng formula to find the confidence interval in population mean given that the X bar is 22.5, S is 7.19, sample size of 8, and T-star of 2.36. Now, ito yung ating formula for confidence interval using the t-distribution. By direct substitution, we'll have 22.5 plus or minus 2.36 times the standard error, which is 7.19 all over squared of 8. Now, multiply these two together and you'll have your margin of error, which is 5.999. Now, to find the confidence interval kung saan i-estimate niya yung population mean nyo, yung range of values nyo will be 16.48 milligrams and 28.51 milligrams na makakapture yung true population mean nyo using that interval. Now, in your conclusion, we are still 95% confident that the true mu lies between 16.48 milligrams and 28.51 milligrams based on our result. However, since the normality is uncertain and it's not given in the problem, we should proceed with caution in our confidence interval.